I remember in 2008, we had the highest inflation in the whole world. We're talking about an annualized inflation rate of over a billion percent. There were people from all over the city who are in need either of clothing, in need of food. There was nowhere to turn, so they would come to the church and it was part of my responsibility to assess their need and use the resources that were available at the church to meet their need. I knew I was making a difference, but the difference was also creating a problem. Instead of helping people, we were actually beginning to hurt people. There were people who would come to us who had great potential, but we killed that potential by continually just giving them the fish for the day. So we started praying for a way that would be sustainable, a way that would equip, uh, equip people to actually be in a position to flourish with the resources that they already had and restore their dignity. So Op International came to Zimbabwe as, a, as an answer to prayer. Charity is a great thing. People love to give. And you never want to tell people to not give, but sometimes when you take a hard look at it, you realize that charity can have a negative impact. And uh, sometimes people come into an expectation of charity, and that can just lead down a road of dependency. Hope's here in Zimbabwe, and they have an amazing team, and they really take time to get into the communities. They take time to meet with the churches and make connections. And they're here for the long term. They're here to make a sustainable impact. Well, here in Zimbabwe, we are using uh, a savings and credit uh, association model where people come together, they pull together their own financial resources. Uh, some groups uh, save as little as 50 cents per individual per week. And it's those little resources that they are faithful to bringing themselves out of deep need because they can borrow from the combined pool and be able to invest in their dreams however small or, or big they might be. When we began experiencing the cash shortages, I began to think, okay, what business can I do that would supply me cash? So then the egg business came into place. You need large numbers. If you, want, if you really want to do business in eggs, um, you have to push volumes. Because the more eggs I've got, the more profit I get, and the more I get out of the business. So I got a loan from the savings club. I didn't know so many people in church. So I was like, okay, let me open myself to getting to know people. Let me join this club. We share the word at the beginning of each meeting. And for me, that's a profound moment because as women, we get to share our experiences and get to marry our experiences to the word of God. The joy or the peace or the energy, the excitement that I feel inside, it's really emanating from the group, knowing that I'm a woman and I can do this. To actually go into the field, see the clients and hear their stories has really changed our lives. It, everybody's really striving for the same thing, to improve their lives. And Hope International is really uh, helping and enabling uh, clients to do that. There was uh, one savings group that uh, was made up of widows with disabled children and uh, had a chance to speak with uh, Shinsasa. And uh, she had a 19-year-old son who's uh, got cerebral palsy. And the Hope International Savings Group that she's involved with enables her to provide for his education and, uh, and his transportation. Uh, the name of their group was Women of Valor, and they were so proud of that. And they were reading out of the Bible from books like Ruth and Esther, and they said, we are strong women, and they were just so proud of themselves. People have a real vested interest in doing well and succeeding and saving their money and paying their loans back, and it builds such accountability and um, just provides dignity that a normal charity handout isn't going to. Yeah, Keystone Custom Homes has been partnering with Hope International for quite a number of years now. And as a team, we get behind this and we get our trade partners to discount or donate material. And we, uh, in turn, invest that back into Hope International. I've known about Hope International, but to be here and to see it firsthand 
um, and see how these ladies' lives are being affected by these microloans or savings groups. They're just so thankful for Hope International. They're so excited for all of us to be here because we represent Hope International even though I work for Keystone Custom Homes, which gives me a renewed uh, sense of value and pride for the job that I do back in Pennsylvania. I'm helping to make these ladies' lives better and uh, make their dreams come true. I started this project with no intention of having 5,000 birds, but now we are planning on a shed that will house 25 cages. We are applying for land. We need a farm to take this bigger. I would want it to be an example to everyone that I'm connecting with, to say, we are women, we can do this, we can work. I know with each appointment set or each sale that's made or each home that's closed, we are going to have some kind of a lasting impact and now to be able to put faces with that impact and names, it just makes it all the more worthwhile. It uh, gives me a deeper meaning in my job that I can realize that what I'm doing for Keystone is helping other people. It's like, is this a business trip? Is it a mission trip? Is it a social event? Is it a vacation? And last night sitting and pondering about the whole thing, it really, to me, it's a life experience. It's a, it's a life changing experience. You know, I really wanted to come here to see what am I doing? Uh, what am I actually providing for Hope? At home, I like to fix things and help people. Uh, that's my passion. I feel much, much happier and better as we build each and every home at Keystone, knowing that this is what it's coming for. As people that have so much, I think it's our obligation to share the stories, to partner with our trades, to bring them aboard, to grow this even bigger.